Well, hi, welcome back to Tucson Workshop. Uh, today we're going to make an Adirondack chair and actually the focus is going to be more making the templates for making the Adirondack chair because after you've made those templates, the project's actually pretty simple. So I included a link for a PDF that you can print out and then you can make a couple for yourself, have a drink, sit back, relax and enjoy your chair. So we'll stay tuned and we'll uh, make one together. All right, so here's the uh, chair that uh, I made my uh, templates off of. Uh, it's kind of old, beaten. This one was actually made out of pine and uh, it's seen its better days, starting to crack and whatnot. Um, I think we can uh, improve a little bit. I'll probably use uh, some white oak, uh, which weathers pretty well. I don't really have easy access to like cypress or uh, some other woods, so the, the white oak will serve well and it also look nice and uh, as long as it's uh, not exposed to the weather in the winter, I think it'll do just fine. So the challenge is to make all the curved pieces. So what we'll do is we'll print out that, uh, that PDF that I made a link to. And the link Actually, you can print out, it's 11 sheets, but when you print it out, there's little triangles to put the, the sheets together. So we'll put those together and uh, uh, tape them together and then cut them out. So there you, there you have it. After you paste them all together and cut them out, you have a paper template full size that you can make the uh, uh, arm or the legs, uh, all the curved pieces. So um, what we'll do is we'll uh, put this on a piece of uh, hardboard and then we'll make it to the same shape. All right, so I have cut out those paper templates and I used some double-sided tape and I put them on a piece of hardboard and now I'll take them to the bandsaw and then we'll cut those out and uh, before we sand them to the edges. We have the pieces uh, sanded. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect because uh, some areas aren't going to join with any other areas. So like the curve here, just so it feels nice and smooth and uh, is pleasing when you touch it. But this side is not going to come in contact with anything because this is going to sit on the ground and this is not going to be in contact with anything. So um, one thing when you're doing the corbels, uh, sand one side, whichever side you want to do, probably this side, and then put it against a, uh, um, a miter saw to square this side up with this side, just so it's perfect, because then this is going to sit against two adjoining areas. Um, and the only change I made was on the back here, which I'll try and tweak the PDF plans, but uh, uh, I like this to be at 90 degrees to this this plane uh, so that that way the piece of wood will sit flat in there uh, and the back will have you know support the whole way 
just a little small detail which uh, doesn't affect the uh, structural integrity of it. But uh, um, so there are a couple places for bolt holes. And what I'll do is I'll take a little scratch all and because we will drill through those areas so that that way we, when we are putting our board to run it, run it on the uh, uh, flush trim router, um, then we can use screw some small holes through there because uh, we're going to be drilling and putting bolts through those areas anyways. The only one, uh, the arm doesn't have any holes. I'm not putting any holes through the arm and the core bell. So for those two, uh, I'm just going to use the double side tape to hold it on the wood while I router it. So. We'll just punch those and then we will, oh, one last thing. Uh, the, this piece should be 20 inches long. So uh, just to be consistent with the slats. So just make sure that when you tape this together that it's 20 inches long. Uh, And we have the uh, templates made for all those curved pieces. So um, I already joined this and planed this down to about three quarters of an inch, maybe just a little bit more. But um, then I can just take the templates and lay it on the piece of wood and figure out where I want to take the wood from. If I want a certain grain pattern uh, or the way the direction of the uh, grain goes to go with that curve of the, uh, uh, the leg. Uh, so it, a little bit more support. But uh, uh, I'll do that and then I'll take, um, trace them out and then I'll go back over to the bandsaw. I'm going to leave probably about a, um, an eighth of an inch of wood and then I'll use uh, the screws or the double side tape to uh, adhere these to the, uh, the wood before I take it over to the, the router table. And then just bring it over and this is the one I had to use double side tape on so and just pry that up and take the tape off one thing don't be stingy with your double side tape 
Uh, I've learned the hard way that sometimes if the router bit catches, then it will pull the template out of the way. And uh, that's bad. All right. So just a little cleanup work, but um, have the long legs and the arms done. Now I just have to do the two back stretchers and the core bell. All right, so we got most of our pieces uh, set to go. Um, now, have all the rounded and curved pieces, so the little core bells. Those, one thing about these, make sure the wood matches because when your eye looks at it, uh, you want the wood to be equal. Hmm. All right, now I'm ready for a little assembly. I tried a couple different ways and I found this way probably worked the best. If you take your uh, two spacer bars and uh, put them in between your two legs and then just grab a clamp and bring those together, and do the same thing in the back. I can swing this around. I'll attach one of the uh, seat uh, slats in the front and then I'll attach the uh, back support for the seat in the back. And I, I did already drill these holes and I used, uh, I find the stainless steel breaks, uh, stainless steel screws break sometimes. So it's much better to uh, drill the appropriate size. And I think these were, uh, the larger hole was like 5.30 seconds and the uh, uh, smaller hole was 7.64 so that that way those screws went in there nicely. And then we can put the legs on. And uh, what I did was just tip this up and I took the legs and positioned them and I put them at that uh, mark. Uh, mine was said was a four and an eighth inch back. And then I clamped these here. That way the back sits flat on the ground and I can make the front sit flat on the ground as well. couple temporary bolts. See if I can get those through. There we go. There's one and the other. So now it's starting to take shape. Um, I'm not going to attach the rest of the uh, seat spacers. I will pre-drill, you know, drill them with pilot holes beforehand so they don't split. But uh, the only place you're going to have trouble is on the inside of these legs trying to drill a pilot hole. You may have to uh, take the, uh, uh, the front legs off while you're putting those on, which we'll get to in a minute. All right, so next is the back pieces. And uh, if you make that three and three quarter inch mark in and then create a 90 degree angle to the, the bottom of the foot, then you can use that to line up your vertical back supports and clamp those in as well. 
and then drill those. There we go, there's one. Let's see if this one will get in. This might be a little harder from this angle. But clamp those down, drill them out, put the, uh, the bolts through. So now I have uh, that set up. Uh, next, uh, what I'll have to make is the back slats. Uh, so we'll go over to the table saw and we'll make those. Now that I have the seat slats on, uh, I'm going to attach the back pieces. Uh, so we'll put those on and uh, uh, then reattach the front legs. All right, next uh, we're going to uh, make some marks for where the core bells are going to go. So when I take these off, I can drill those out. Uh, but I've removed a couple of the uh, slats from the seat because I'm going to use a couple pocket screws right here and here. And that's going to hold the, the arm on. So I'll take the uh, legs off and then make those uh, pocket holes. And then I'll make uh, pocket holes in the uh, Corbels too uh, to hold the top on. All right, next is uh, attaching the arms. And the only place I really have to clean up is in the back here. But, uh, and I'll round over all, all the arm. But uh, uh, what I'll do is uh, take a little chisel, clean that out to a square angle, and then slide that back and attach that. Mm -hmm. All right, for this, I think I'm gonna start off with a climbing cut where I go with the spin of the uh, router bit. 
and then I'll finish it off going the, the proper way. All right, so now we're ready to put the arms on. Uh, I have those pocket screws uh, for those holes and uh, I'm going to do is set this up here. I want it to sit nice and flat here, but I want a consistent distance from the uh, core bell. So I set my T-square and I'll set it for there. And then just bring it back to the back vertical leg. One of the last things to do is just drill through here uh, to attach the back bolt there. And I'm just going to hold it for a second with a uh, clamp. And then just slide that bolt through. Attach a washer nut. And then do the same thing on the other side. Well, there you have it. Um, you make the templates, make a couple chairs for yourself or uh, one of your friends. But uh, you can stain it beforehand or paint it, whatever you want, depending on the type of wood you use. But uh, uh, it's a comfortable chair, has a nice curve to the, the seat. And uh, I put my drink right here. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like what you saw, then click subscribe, please. Thanks.